The Seerat of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Part 22 So now Abraha, the governor of Yemen When he hears that somebody has come and defecated In his cathedral and has desecrated his cathedral Disrespected his cathedral He was enraged, he was extremely angry And he said, I won't rest until I've bulldozed the Kaaba down to the ground And so with this evil intention, he set off from Yemen now the secret weapon that he took with him along with his army he had a huge army but his secret weapon were elephants because he originally originated from africa and in africa they have uh, elephants in arabia they don't have elephants so he set off with elephants which had never been seen in, in arabia now these are fighting elephants uh, trained for warfare so not only are they good for sh shooting arrows from uh, on top of their back a person's got a good vantage point and then he can shoot arrows down on the enemy but also when the elephants charge then they trample people also so initially when the arabs found out that this guy he's going to break the kaaba they opposed him they stood in his way but because of his army and because of his elephants abraha was able to defeat all the tribes who rose up who rose up against him and he killed them and so news spread of this amongst the arabs amongst the arab tribes and so and people stopped standing in his way people soon learned that nobody can stand in his path whoever stands in his path they get killed and their villages get pillaged uh, and so he gained notoriety he became uh, notorious amongst the people that this guy is out for vengeance and don't stand in his way. Until he made his way all the way to Taif, which is about 90 miles or 90 kilometer, uh, kilometers away from Mecca. When he got to Taif, the tribe there, Banu Thaqif, they had also heard that no one can stand in this guy's way. And although Banu Thaqif was a tribe known for their warfare and known as warriors they were well known for that but they feared that if abraha um if we try to find fight abraha then abraha will destroy our temple and in taif they had a huge temple which paid homage to their god lat lat and uzza are their famous idols so lat the t temple of lat was in taif and it was a huge temple. So Banu Thaqif feared that if we stand in opposition to Abraha, he will destroy our temple. So they went to him and they said, look, we don't want to stop you. We don't want to fight you. We don't want to stand in your path. Please don't attack us. So he said, okay, well and good, but give me something. So uh, as a surety that you're not going to... Uh, uh, attack me you're not going to backstab me you're not going to betray me so from the banu thaqif tribe they offered him a person whose name was abu rughal who volunteered himself he said i will show you the way from taif to mecca because in those days they have roads and if a person didn't know the way he'd get lost and then he'd take a day's journey would take 10 days in the desert and then you know a person could die so guides were very important so abu rughal was the person who volunteered himself to guide uh, Abraha and his army to the Kaabatullah. Uh, knowing full well that Abraha, well, with what in evil intention Abraha was going, Abu Rughal still offered to help himself, to, to offer himself and to help Abraha. And so what happened was, they set off, but when they were two miles from Mecca, Allah Ta'ala made Abu Rughal die. And then Abu Rughal, his name became synonymous with treachery. And the Arabs for a long time afterwards, they used to say, if somebody was um, treacherous, if somebody betrayed his people, then they'd say that you're more treacherous than Abu Rughal. 
it became like part of their uh, idioms and part of their dictionary that they used Abu Rughal's name and they felt so betrayed that this guy he betrayed his people he betrayed his tribe he betrayed Allah he betrayed the house of Allah they were so disgusted by his actions that the Arabs for a long time afterwards they used to go and they used to stone the grave of Abu Rughal in fact up to recently in history it's been recorded that people used to go and stone his his grave, the grave of uh, Abu Rughal, just as in Hajj people go and they stone the Jamarat, the, the devils, in the same way they considered this man a devil and uh, a backstabber that he betrayed his people and he traded his honour for money. And before Abu Rughal joined them, uh, from one of the other tribes, Abraha already had a, a guide. And that was a person called Nufail, who was a leader of, of one of the tribes of Arabia. And when Abraha came upon them, he said that, look, I don't, we don't want to fight you. So then um, Abraha said to his army, he said, capture this man, this leader. And uh, Abraha said to the leader, Nufail, he said, I'll ransom your life. I'll spare you if you guide me to the Kaaba. So Nufail became the reluctant guide of Abraha. So Nufail was a reluctant guide and the guide who volunteered was Abu Rughal. But by the decree of Allah, Abu Rughal died before he could enter into Makkah. So Nufail is still with the contingent, is still with the army, he's guiding them, but he's doing it reluctantly. And uh, Abraha had many elephants, but the main elephant, the biggest uh. elephant, uh, was an elephant called Mahmud. The name of the elephant was Mahmud, and the keeper of the elephant, the one who trained the elephant and guided the elephant, his name was Unais. <laughs> 